it is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool. I'm so excited you're here um, to join me tonight. So tonight we are talking all about a farm theme in your classroom and I'm gonna walk around my, my classroom and I'm gonna give you ideas for um, every center in your classroom. I want you to tell me, do you do a farm thing in your classroom in the spring or do you do it in the fall? Because I know a lot of teachers um, some do it in the fall and some do it in the spring. So please tell us in the comments if you do um, your farm theme in the spring or the fall. We are doing a farm theme. Can you tell? <laughs> Just a little bit. So our pretend is a farm and we actually, I'm Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it actually has not been open yet. We have been making and painting and we actually have um, donuts with dad on Friday. So we've been prepping that too. So pretend's actually been closed, except it's been open um, to make things for the center. So I'm gonna rock around and kind of show you um, our pretend um, farm. So I'll kind of give you guys a wide backup view of our farm and it's super, super fun. So I kind of have like a little farmhouse going like right here on this side. And then all around the back, I have kind of like the farm. And then on the ground, we have the vegetable garden. And then right here, we have a flower garden. And then we have a berry patch and our corn field. And then our barn with our um, sheep and our cows. <laughs> we have a pig pen with a couple little piggies in it. We have an orchard with an apple tree. Our dollhouse, which I actually just got this at Ikea a couple weeks ago, so I'm super excited. We now have a dollhouse in our classroom, but right now it's actually not even a dollhouse, it's a chicken house with our little, our little chickens. And I'll kind of tell you guys how we made all this in just a second. But these nests are actually just paper bags. And then um, these are like those eggs from Easter time that are just like, um, like white. And then, yeah, and then we may, we have some like farm equipment, I guess, down here. And then we have hay bales, which the hay bales are just shoe boxes, I like, covered in yellow paper. And then um, we cut some yellow strips on, so it was a fun um, way to get them, um, a fun way to get them cutting strips of paper. And then um, for this theme, I actually have a visual, because farm for some kiddos is a little bit hard. I actually live, kind of on a farm, so it's not as big of a stretch for um, my kiddos is when I taught full day, it was a little bit more, because we were more um, in the county, and they really didn't know what a farm was, um, except for what they had like seen on TV. So it was just kind of some visuals of different things they could do on the farm, so that way they didn't get come over here and be like, what, what am I supposed to do? And then we have an inventory list, so I can get them counting and identifying numbers. And then we also have our farmer's day, kind of like a schedule of what they do. Because farmers work um, a lot and they basically, they work, they eat, they work, they eat. So I just kind of have that nice little visual schedule for them um, to support their play. And then we have my kid, the farmhouse, which is from Ikea. And then I have minimal stuff in the fridge just because um, I want them to be more, doing more of the farmer things than the actual like cooking. Um, so I just kind of have minimal stuff in the farmhouse. In this fridge, I think I got like on clearance somewhere from Discount School Supply, I think. Um, so kind of the first day, like on Monday when they came in, I just had all the paper on the wall. And then um, uh, um, two or three at a time, they came in and they picked what they wanted to paint. Like some kiddos painted the, the corn, some kiddos painted the berry patch. Some kids painted the flower garden. And what I did was I um, I just pulled up on my phone what a cornfield looked like so they had kind of a visual on what to paint. Um, and these corn are actually really cool because look, they are on, okay, my staple just came out. I'll have to redo that one. Let me pull that out so I don't forget. Otherwise, I'll forget, okay. Okay, so these are actually on Velcro. So they can act, and then I put Velcro dot on the other side. So they can actually, when they're the farmer, they can pick and harvest the corn. They can harvest the blueberries. 
they can, let me put my fruit down, they can pick the flowers. And I put stems on these, that way they can take it and they can put them, they don't stand up very well, but I'll have to figure something out for that <laughs> to make them um, stand up a little bit better. They're really big, <laughs> the kiddos made them really big this year. So yeah, there we go. So now we have flowers in our farmhouse. And then we have our dirt pile so they can take some dirt and they can act out the life cycle of a um, plant and then they can plant some seeds and they can use the um, tools and they can water and they can feed the animals some hay bales. They can give them water and then they can, um, oh, and then we have carrots. So they can put the carrots in the field and pretend those are growing and I accidentally put Velcro dots on those. So, so they can pretend those are growing and then pick those. And then I have, um, and the apple tree is the same way. They're on Velcro too. Um, they've actually, um, in years past, they will actually, oh, I didn't put my pots in. I don't know where those are. Okay, I'll have to get pots back up. But they'll actually put them in the pots and they'll use them as their pretend food, which is really, really fun. So it's a very interactive, hands-on, um, dramatic play. Oh, and I have farmer hats from the Dollar Tree. Hold on one second. I can't see my questions. Ooh, put some, Sarah said put Play-Doh at the bottom of the vase. Ooh, that's a great idea, Sarah. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that way they can act out. They can actually harvest. They can actually um, feed the animals, water the animals. Now, we're not going to pretend to eat the animals or anything like that. Um, but they can actually go to the chicken house and collect the eggs and things like that. So we've been busy the past couple Monday, Monday and today kind of getting everything ready. And what that looked like was, was for our morning table time, they came in and there were these four baskets on the table and they just, um, it's just colored cardstock and they just cut them out. And then on the corn, they just drew circles on them. On the corn, I actually had a real piece of corn on the table, so they kind of knew what it would look like for a visual. Because how many times, at least during the winter, a lot of kids don't eat corn on the cob, so I had a visual out for that. Um, but yeah, so they were cutting, and then some of them at the other table, they were cutting um, hay, so they got to pick what they um, cut for morning table time. And all of these pr um, farm printables are in my dramatic play pack, and it comes with, like, this is the actual pack. Um, it comes with actual photos and it tells you how to set everything up. And this was my full day classroom, so that's why it looks a little different. Um, and the setup might be a little bit different. So everything's in there. There's um, a planning web for your whole theme, and there's um, all, all kinds of printables in there. Everything that was in there is in, it's in there. So yeah, so that actually, if you go to the top of this post and go to TPT Farm link, that is in there. So Sarah says, how long do I keep this in? When I taught full day, we would do this theme for um, up to four weeks. This year we're doing it two weeks. And I haven't, it's, 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 too, it's a little bit too short, but four weeks I thought when I taught full day was a little bit too long. So um, I'm trying, I think I'm gonna do two week themes again next year, but um, I might do the dramatic play for four weeks. Um, I haven't really figured that out yet. Cause it does, it was a lot to set up. Um, I do it kind of in stages, but um, I bet it took me probably, it takes me probably about an hour to take one down um, and put it back up um, with help of another person. So it is, it is, it is work, but um, it's worth it in the end. So here are, this is what we've been doing for art the past on Monday and today. And we actually did this, this was our small group activity. Um, they got to pick an animal. That's why we don't have a ton. So they could pick either a pig, a sheep, um, or chickens, <laughs> um, and they just cut out the patterns. And I did help um, my three-year-olds cut out some of the smaller pieces. Um, and they also, you guys know I love my loop scissors because they bounce right back open. And I forgot to put my links in, but um, I actually um, have like an Amazon store with all my favorite things in it from Amazon, so I will put that link in. Because I also found these new um, smaller bounce back scissors. That way if your kiddos got super small hands, I'll kind of put them so 
there's kind of like the difference. And there's, here's a pair of regular kid scissors just so you can see. So that really helped my three-year-old, um, these loop scissors, be able to cut all of it out um, and not get super, super tired. Um, but when they did get tired, I just finished cutting it out for them. That way they could be successful and still, um, you know, be, um, do the activity with us. So I kind of base it on their own individual level. And then we, um, I haven't actually read this book yet, but we, um, I, we're going to read it on Friday, but we've been doing potato art. And normally I, um, I throw the potatoes away every day, but I wanted to keep it out so you guys could see it. But I just cut a potato in half and then we painted with the potatoes. And you can tell they had a lot of fun um, doing that. But the Enormous Potatoes are a really fun book if you're doing um, some potato art. And you can also paint with other veggies, but potatoes are super fun because they're circles. <laughs> at least that's what I think. And then I also at the easel, I just have some pictures of some farm animals to kind of inspire them to um, paint something at the easel. That's not, you know, just all crazy. <laughs> um, but if they want to paint all crazy, they totally can. And then here's our Play-Doh tray. So I have little sticks because they've been using these for like fences. And these are just craft sticks, but they're like the half size. And then I have um, brown and green Play-Doh and some little farm animals. And then I have my veggie counters so they can make vegetable gardens or make barns with the Play-Doh and sculpt. And Play-Doh trays are great because they're problem solving and um, they're problem solving. They're doing fine motor. They're um, using all that vocabulary um, related to the theme. And I will say, uh, my Play-Doh trays get used uh, like every single day. That's why I have one out for every single thing because they love them. So here's the Farm Writing Center. So I have our themed words and I have some paper and then I have the lowercase cards for my older friends. And then I have our books. And I'll tell you a couple of new books because you guys know I love, love books. So we actually read this one today because um, I've been having a few friends get a little frustrated. Um, so we read Marvin Gets Mad and it's about a sheep that can't, here let me open it a little really quick. It's about, it's from Scholastic, you can tell <laughs> right there. It's about this sheep Marvin and he can't reach that. He wants this apple and he can't reach it and then he falls asleep and then his friend eats it. <laughs> so it was an accident. She didn't know that was his apple that he wanted. Um, and then he gets super mad and then he screams and he grows horns and it's, and then he calms down and then his friend comes back to play. So it's a really great um, way to talk about how to calm down in, a, um, in an appropriate way. And we actually, I'm gonna walk this way. Sorry if I make you guys dizzy. I actually got out our calm down kit and we kind of just talked about what was in there again, just kind of for a little review. Um, I let the kiddos pick one thing out and we just kind of felt it, felt the things that were in there again. You know, a couple friends wanted to blow on the pinwheel. We practiced the deep breath chart super quick. It only took, you know, three or four minutes to, you know, talk about the things in here. But it's sometimes it's a nice little refresher um, that this is here and how to use it. Because I do have um, two friends who use this a lot. This is um, their new favorite thing. These are at the Target Dollar Spot. And they're those squishy, like, ice cream cones. And they have different ones. So that was a fun way to kind of get some social emotional in while talking about the farm. All right, so now we'll do some, ooh, here's sensory. So here's our sensory table. So I have some corn, and then I have some little tractors in, which I totally took from my own kiddos. And then I put some little farm animals in, and then these were like mini Jenga blocks, I think I found at like Dollar Tree. And my, I, um, a pre-K friend did this today, and I just um, asked her if she would leave it so I could show you, show you guys tonight. But there's, you know, lots of problem solving going on. And I put in these little, these are like formula sheets, but they're really fun um, for all these little things. And it doesn't, when they use the little scoops, it doesn't like bounce out like if they have big buckets. Plus when they're using little scoops, they're using that pincer muscles, those pincer muscles. So it's a really, um, these little scoops are great. 
I know some like energy drinks and stuff like have little scoops or you could ask parents if anything they have have little scoops and then I put some little pom-poms in so they can pretend they're fruit or veggies um, or just you know display and mix it up too so that's totally fine it will take corn to spend a while it's not a quiet sensory bin but it's a fun one so all right let's go to blocks and if you have questions just pop them in the comments so i have a couple of friends left these up for us today it's funny now that every day they ask do you want me to leave them up for your videos and i was like yeah that'd be great friends thanks so much so this one's a um a little lady who just turned four she made her garden and she built around it so she you know she's working on building those enclosures and then a pre-k friend built a horse stable over there so it's got you know a roof and it's balanced and then i have a new challenge up who can build the tallest barn and these if you click on farm goodies at the top of this post these these challenge cards are free on my blog. I bought the corn. I just bought like popcorn, like kernels at Walmart for the sensory table. And these are actually from my fall I Can Build STEM pack. There, I just pulled up the farm ones. And then I put out again more of the farm counters and I have string for the measuring. And then I have a tractor book and I totally took my kids' tractor. And then some farm animals. And I wanna say these are um, most of these are Lakeshore. A couple of the big ones I bought, like in the Target dollar spot, but most of these are Lakeshore. And they are, Lakeshore does have a really good, um, I, I really do love their block animal sets. They are pricey, <laughs> but um, they'll last forever. So, yeah. So there's the block center. Lots of fun STEM happening. We'll walk over to um, Discovery, which is where I have all my science and math. So, um, the week before we did plants, we were kind of doing spring and we planted some plants and we were watching them grow and measuring them and we talked about parts of a plant and what a plant needs. And this poster is a freebie on my spring blog post if you want that. Um, but since we are doing farm now, I kind of wanted to keep the plant theme going and I just put out, and typically I put these back in the fridge every night if, um, after school is over just so I keep my veggies a little bit fresh so they don't get all gross um, but I left them out for you guys to see but um, I just put out some vegetables for them to just touch and feel and explore and measure and smell because how often do you think a kiddo's actually seen a radish or um, I, I couldn't find the carrots with the, the green tops but I was trying to but I mean now everybody buys those bags of carrots so kids may not be, have seen a carrot that looks like a carrot like they may only they may think carrots are only small mini ones and then I have a, a piece of corn um, and a pepper and it definitely you can smell the pepper back here <laughs> and I got some tomatoes I got some that were like on the vine um, so they could see how kind of like the stem grows so just and I put on a magnifying glass and a ruler and I also this, this is super old I made this like forever ago but I just put some um, pictures out. I, I think I Google imaged just some pictures of vegetables and I just um, put a word at the bottom. And I also have these. I think they're outrageous now on um, on Amazon, but it's the life cycle of a carrot by Linda something. I'm not even going to try. Um, but any kind of um, life cycle of a vegetable plant works really, um, would work great for the Science Center for um, Farm. And I had a friend who was sick today, so we were going to actually plant lima beans and radishes and carrots and peas and lettuce in these little cups. And I was gonna have, um, I was just gonna glue, glue these to the top and kind of stick them in the dirt. But I, I had somebody out sick today, so um, I didn't want them to miss planting. So we're just, we're gonna do it on Friday. But that's really fun to plant. Um, seeds and watch some things grow fast, some things grow slow. I know a trick I like to use if you're just doing the beans, um, put them in like a wet paper towel like for one or two days and just it wets the seed coat and it kind of sprouts them. But radishes grow super fast um, and so does lettuce. So those are some fun ones to grow in the classroom because 
some kiddos may, they may not plant at home. And that's okay, so do it at school. All right, so I know everybody loves, love, loves, click, clack, moo, cows that type. And there's like a whole bunch of books in that series. And after this is over, I actually have these little letters. I have a printable of them. I will pop that in the Pocket of Preschool group files and I'll link it in this post too so you guys can just download it from Google Docs. Um, but basically you just cut them up and I have an uppercase bucket and I have a lowercase bucket. So if you have three-year-olds, your, your three-year-olds can type or you know just make a letter collage with these letters like the book and then like maybe you would um, have your pre-K kiddos make their name or if you have kinder they could type sight words. It's just a nice, fun, colorful way to do letters. And then in my farm centers pack I have a read, build, write and you can do sight words. And then you, do, um, you read it, you build it with like a letter manipulative and then you write it with a dry erase marker. And you can do student names with these. Um, and I, I use these and I forgot what else is. We do a lot of, of name building with my threes. So um, there's blank ones in there. So I would just write the um, kiddo's name on them and then they would read it. And then I also have them read me the actual letters in their name and then build it and then write it. And then I just have a farm rhyme time game. So they just have a rhyming match. And there a lot of them are like farm. Um, that one's a bad example, but like there's like goose in here and they're rhyming like goat and pig. So a lot of like farm rhymes. And then there's so many things in farm. I made an alphabet puzzle game. And um, as you can see, a lot of them have to do with farm. Maybe not the ice cream one, but I guess cows make milk and milk comes from, or ice cream comes from milk, right? But otherwise, most of them are farm related, but like S for silo and she, um, Oh, this is R. Oops, sorry, that's rooster. And there is a key on it too, so you know what all the pictures are. And if you ever forget, you can always just write them on the back. Oh, Roxanne says she loves the farming and the alphabet. I know, this is a really fun puzzle. And if you have threes, or even if you have pre-K kiddos that get overwhelmed with a lot of puzzle pieces, just put out maybe like 10 letters or put out half of the letters. Or you can also make a lot of my games in a pocket chart or a file folder game. So what you would do, and you can do this for this one too. So you would just glue, like if you're, po like let's say this table was my pocket chart. Just glue these onto the pocket chart and then laminate these and put the Velcro dots here. So if you like file folder games, a lot of my games, you can easily make in a file folder games. And you can have one on the front, you can have it on the back, the inside, however you, however it works for you. Yeah. Alrighty, so let's keep going. So I'm gonna do a fun dirt snack. So I have a friend who's gluten-free. So if you have gluten-free friends, um, Target now has gummy worms that are gluten for you guys, like this is like this is a big deal for us, like, cause I I we haven't done a lot of fun snacks this year, cause I don't want her to feel left out. But I'm just super excited because we found gluten free gummy worms, and these pudding snacks are um, gluten free too. Where's that? There it is, gluten free right there. So um so yeah, so you can do the dirt cups where they crap they smash the cookies in a baggie, which is great fine motor, and then they. Um, get their pudding cup and then they get their worm and they can have a little um, a little dirt dirt snack which is super fun and then I have some number oh sorry I have some number games or a number tracing map so for my older kiddos they have to fill it in and then for my younger friends they, they're just tracing so it's again differentiated for all the different types of learner or all the different levels and if you have and it does have the lower level, the lower numbers too. So if you have um, like friends who are maybe like just like pre-K, but maybe they don't, um, the numbers, the teen numbers are tricky for them, just put out the, the ones up to 10 and have them fill those in. And then, and then they're successful. So just use the parts of it um, for your, um, your level of kiddos. And then we've been talking a lot about all the places on a farm. So why not have them make a map of the farm? And in my Farm Center's printable pack, excuse me, something in my throat. <coughs> um, there's actually these pieces um, in black and white and in color 
so they can cut them out and make them or they can draw the whole thing themselves whatever you want but i did make a key so if you wanted them to do all of it by themselves they can and then i have some examples too which is fun and then growing a shape garden and it's really fun um, to also make shape garden collages that's really fun way to talk about shapes or you can um if they know their shapes talk about the sides and the vertices and talk about all those um all about their characteristics take it to the next level and then tractor race because who doesn't love a good tractor race right we literally have tractor races out here in on our um what's it called when we have those um fairs <laughs> there's like tractor poles and stuff so i made a tractor race game so they roll one or two dice and then they um, dot that many, or you can color copy these, and then they can just cover them. If you, um, you, um, they don't want to, um, what's it called? If you don't want to use it as like a worksheet, just color copy it, and you can use it as a game board. Somebody says, tell me more about Max. So what you can do is, is talk about all the different places on a farm, and I listed them here with visuals, and have the kiddos, um, um, cut out all the pieces, which they're just like little squares. Where's my, there we go. They're like little squares like that big. And then they put them on and then they make the path. So they would draw the path. And then I just have some examples. That way the kiddos have a visual of what it could look like when they're done. And I think, sorry, I think that might be it tonight. Oh, let me tell you how I get organized because every, I always get that after um, we're done. So I organize all my themes in these plastic tubs from Michael's. They're iris containers. And then um, I keep all of my printables in here. And then I keep the printable pack in a ring because I'm not a binder girl. I'm more of a page protector ring girl. And I just keep all of it in here and it has pictures and then I keep the, um, the printables on the back. But that way I have, and I, I remember what activities I have. Because some, sometimes I forget. And then like here's a little bit of the sensory that I can do. Um, I, this will help me remember that I have carrot eggs if I want to do a, a game for that. Um, I sometimes put the little manipulatives I have to go with that theme. So this will help me remember that I have farm counters and little farm animals and fruit and veggie counters. Because if you've been teaching forever, or if you are just scatterbrained like me a little bit, um, you forget all the things you have, and then you do the theme, and you didn't get out all the cool stuff. And these labels, if you go on my blog, they're a freebie on my blog. And then how I store my pretend is I keep each theme in a box, a copy box, just because they were free. And then I put the, this is the cover on the front, and I keep all of the papers in, all the actual pack, printable pack in here. And then I keep all the stuff in here. So like, I'll keep as much of this as I can and put it in the box. Like I'll keep the necks, the the um, the chicken nests and the eggs and um, whatever I can keep, I can, I'll keep so I can use it next year and I'll put it in here. And that way I don't have to hopefully find everything again. And then I can just slowly grow my collection. And sometimes I um, keep extra signs and things and when I taught full day my signs all come blank or they come with the words on them so if you have pre-k and, and, and full day or if you have time have the kiddos write the um write and either sound out if you can see this was dirt I had a little pre-k friend sound it out vegetable <laughs> garden um so when I taught full day I had time to do um they did all the signs and they even did um, the labels too. And I know a lot of kinder teachers totally take advantage of these signs and that's a great way um, for them, tractor, <laughs> park main. Um, it's a great way to infuse literacy into dramatic play and I know that makes a lot of um, kindergarten principals happy because you're doing more literacy, um, more literacy at, at the, um, when you're doing play. 
if you're one of the lucky kinder teachers that are lucky enough to actually get to have it because I know a lot of um, you guys have had to get rid of them. So hopefully we'll all get them back eventually. How do I print out all my activities? So I use um, HP printers and I use the Instant Ink program because it's cheaper and they send you ink in the mail. And Melissa, I'll put a link um, in here and it's um, to tell you all about it and um, what printers I have and like my mom has one so I know that one works um, so I put that in there too to kind of help you guys out. All right. So Lisa says, how do I teach kids to use everything properly? So at the beginning of the year, we work on that a lot. And my shelves at the beginning of the year, I would say are half empty. Well, maybe not half empty, I would say like three fourths full and definitely the tops of my shelves do not have that much on them. Um, and the materials are much easier um, they're not as complex like the games and things and the manipulatives and stuff like that. It's um, simpler stuff since it's, you know, the beginning of the year. So we just talk a lot about how to take care of our classroom and we um, have class meetings and we practice. Like at the beginning of the year, we practice using glue sticks and we practice um, playing in the sensory table and sweeping it up. Um, we, you know, we practice cleaning up if we need to. And we do that throughout the year if it gets crazy. Um, we'll just practice cleaning up. And I actually have a whole bunch of social stories that help with that and visual supports. Um, and that I have a whole bunch of, I have a whole, um, a whole curriculum of character and social skills. Well, you guys have a great night and I will talk to you soon. Hop over to the um, Pocket of Preschool Facebook group and talk all things Pocket of Preschool and I'm there um, almost every day talking about good stuff. All right, so have a great day and I, or great night and I'll talk to you next week.